Hi, this is the advisor with Stacy Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. Today, I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us. This is Vivian Knabel, and she has an amazing story to tell us. She has um, a story about how she went through tragedy and turned it into positivity and how she's helping so many people with the things that she's doing right now. So Vivian, why don't you tell people a little about yourself and what you do? Well, if... <clears throat> I actually learned very early on how tough life can be. You know, I was born in 1943 at the height of the war, mm -hmm. Hitler's Nazi Germany, in the epicenter in Berlin. I was an illegitimate child, so I was given no nationality. So I was a girl without a country. And I experienced hunger, cold, and the real harsh realities of life. And uh, I think they that all made it's Mark. It, those realities, that those harsh realities made their mark on me and toughened me against the adversities of the world. Right. You know, it's it's amazing because when I read about your story, you had an amazing story to tell. Can you tell people a little about some of the things that you went through as a child and, and how you struggled so people could understand and, and yes. leave yes. Of this and so forth? Yes. You know, the aftermath uh, of uh, of the World War II was very tough. And that is the time I remember. I don't actually remember the war because I was just a baby at that time. Right. But uh, <clears throat> the aftermath, I very well remember. It, it was nothing. The, the world was devoid of color. It was just harsh and hunger and cold were constant. And, uh, and uh, my mother worked in the black market to mm -hmm. keep her two children uh, afloat. Yes. And uh, it kept us together, though. We were a unit of three, my mother, my sister, and I. We were both two illegitimate children, uh, but we had the most uh, loving mother. Mm -hmm. she, was, uh, 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 she was the most beautiful soul one can imagine and uh, protected us, instilled so much love and compassion in us, and also... Um, uh, brought us up to be compassionate and uh, so I think that all that made its mark on me and that is what I became and of course it was very tough my mother then immigrated uh, when I was 13 years old we crossed the Atlantic <clears throat> and despite all the toughness in Germany and the bad experiences that I had when that boat made its way into the water I look back at my homeland and even at the age of 13, I said, one day I'll come back and I'll come back successful. I'll show you. And I did just that. I, as a child, I already manifested my, my life. I think it was, my mother taught us to always have a dream, never give up, give up on a dream. And she also um, pointed always the, out the beautiful things in life. Even though we were surrounded by darkness, she uh, showed us that, that there's another side of life. And right. she, she taught us that. And I think that is what made me the person I am today. So basically, and by then, going through, yeah. focusing on, on the positive aspect and having a dream and working towards that dream really helped you a lot. Absolutely. And then when we arrived in Canada, the first year we went hungry once again because we were not in command in the uh, uh, with the the uh, command of the English language, mm -hmm. and uh, in the winter, it was the first winter was so tough, and uh, uh, there was no work to be found. And uh, my mother took me by the hand; she was resourceful. Took me into a church. We walked into a church, just randomly picked out a church and explained, you know, with a few words that I could uh, speak, uh, our plight to the priest, and he helped us with thirty five dollars to get staples you know so I went I know what it means not to have and now I live in luxury mm -hmm. and I still have not uh, forgotten uh, where I came from it kept yes. me grounded in reality and uh, I'm actually I think of it as I look back I think it was a gift because I could never be the person I am today so appreciative uh, for all um, that is given to me, uh, even the smallest things. Yes. I'm very, very grateful. I think that is actually the one characteristic that defines me best. 
a profound sense of gratitude. Yes. I think gratitude is so important. I think people sometimes in our society, we're given so much sometimes and we we always think I want, I want, I want. And you have to really think and stop for a second and think about what you have and have be gracious and have gratitude for that. Because, you exactly. know, if you focus on the positive things you have in your life and the positive people you have in your life, you can become so strong of a person, I think, and go so far, don't you think? Absolutely, absolutely. It, it cheers us on in everything thing we do in life to be positive and optimistic and uh, gr gratitude I mean it is definitely it represents the fullness of life you know it makes yeah. what you have into enough and even more right and that starts when you sit down at the table and you break your bread be grateful for that yes and one must never forget and if you tend to forget then just look at what's going on in the war today some somewhat like Hitler's war you know, Putin's war in the Ukraine, right. those people are suffering. And whenever we complain, we need to, you know, really think of what's out there, you know, yes. how fortunate we are. Yes, you know, I, people don't realize, especially in, in the United States and in Canada and other countries like ours who have, you know, been blessed and we do have a lot of things. When you go to other countries and you do visit other countries, your mouth just drops because if you see yes. how the, these people are just striving, you know, just to live, you know. And you strange, right. And the strange thing is uh, uh, they often have happy faces. Have they you do. ever noticed they yes. have so much less, but they're so grateful for what little they have they can get. So, you know, we need to, and this is, like I said earlier, I am, I consider myself a student of life and uh, <clears throat> to, we need to be really grateful and aware and turn more inward instead of being on that hedonic treadmill, compete, compete more, more. Yes, it's great to be successful. It's great to set goals, to, to set achievable goals. But I think the real true happiness comes from within. It does. You, you know, when you look within, you really awaken. When yes. you look outside, you dream. Yes. You know, that is definitely how it is. And I've studied enough and went inward enough. And I have come to a point where I live a life of fullness with a very meaningful and content and happy life. And I think that's the that is the greatest gift one can have. That that is wealth. Yes. To have a, the dignity of living a really beautiful, meaningful life. Yes, because I think if you can't love who you are inside and if you're not happy within you can't you can't enjoy the outsides and the outskirts of life if you're not happy within yourself. You know, I so think so true. Yes, you're so true, and uh, and you also will affect others much. You reach others much more. You yes. know, when you are open, and also I believe in vulnerability. You know, when I wrote my first book, uh, I became very successful because my husband was the one that actually. Uh, was the wind beneath my wings once I, wow. I married him as a, uh, I was uh, barely 21 when we married and he believed in me and he all, um, encouraged me to learn and grow you can do anything you know he always said I uh, learned to pilot a plane I ran a marathon I did things that I never thought were possible <laughs> but he taught me to let go of those self-limiting beliefs right. you know, which we which shackle us you know, and yes. I did that. And uh, as I became so successful and had such a wonderful life and with luxury, I reflected back on my life uh, at a later age uh, more so and said, I want to thank my husband for all that he's done. And I wrote my first book and I mentioned uh, in, it's a token of gratitude to him for his 80th birthday. Oh, and uh, for all that he's done for me, and uh, it's my memoir. It's uh, it is uh, it sh starts right from the beginning of my life and until this point. Oh, that's wonderful! And you have that book right now. Is it out right now? Yes, that has been published. I think two years ago. It's called "From Rubble to Champagne" because I literally came out of the rubble, and my life now is champagne. I so love that's that. Yeah. Uh, 
So uh, yeah, it's it's uh, rising from the ashes of war torn Berlin to a life of grace, beauty, and gratitude. That was my that. first book. Yeah. Now, for people who are out there that you know that go through have been going through obstacles, not exactly like yours, but they they're going through tough times. How do you help someone if you had to give them tips on how to move forward and not give up? So many people, when they come across obstacles, they just fall into like a pit hole or they give up on themselves and they give up on life. How do you, you know, if you had the best tips for somebody, yeah. what would you tell them? I'd, I'd say never lose hope. And even if you're in the midst of chaos and everything is not going for you, right? You, Focus on that one little crumb of good you can find among that. There's always a little crumb of good. Focus yeah. only on that and see uh, see that, uh, you know, life changes. It's not static. It changes is even if we don't want it to. Right. So we must believe that because I was at the brink uh, of committing suicide at the age of 17 when I thought all my efforts are in vain you know it doesn't seem like it's going to get any better and yeah. as 17 as a teenager you are you think that's always going to be like that well it is not right and I tried to commit suicide uh, and uh, I was saved by a little girl miraculously and uh, I picked myself up and clung to a glimmer of hope and there always needs to be hope things will change and yes. always believe better is coming yes better is coming and uh, and uh, all the adversities they make us strong we need to go through these challenges there is no life without adversity and challenges That's without true. it there can be no life right and that is really in our struggles we grow the most we do that's very very true I think we gain strength and wisdom through our challenges in life and they do make us stronger, I think. And I, I think they do give us the the uh, the knowledge to actually go forward and even bring ourselves to a higher level, don't you think? Exactly. They bring us to a, a higher level of awareness and uh, make us stronger. Absolutely. And always, I always, I do believe that there's always good waiting for all of us. Yes. You know, we have to go through this mud. We have to go through this in order to grow. And there's always the beauty of life awaiting, better is awaiting. So people need to keep that in mind and never give up hope and uh, always do your best. Yes. Always do your best and put in the work. Do the, run the extra mile. Right. I did it always. And I, to this day, I still do it. Right. I think you that's... Know, I could, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. I'm so no, sorry. No, 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 no. I said, I said, I think that's so good. It's wonderful that you do that. You know? Yeah. <clears throat> I think it's, it's really important and uh, to uh, keep growing. You know, it doesn't stop. It's amazing. Life has become more and more fascinating for me. Yes. You know, I, I because... think, I think just like life itself, you know, like, like a rose bush, everything keeps growing. It consistently keeps growing. Life itself keeps growing. Exactly. That's exactly how it is. And uh, it's such a beautiful journey. And I like to, I like to uh, reinforce the belief of the preciousness of life. People don't really, a lot of people don't focus on it and be just grateful for what you have. If, you, if you're healthy, that is the biggest wealth. You know, you yes. can have. And uh, we are he all here for a purpose. Yeah. I believe in purpose. And I think we all are here for purpose. And when people don't know which, which, what should I do? Am I good at anything? I ask myself those questions. Well, go to your core. You know, I always say go to into your core. Go back inward and find out what makes you tick. What makes you feel motivated? Where do you feel best? That is the authentic you. And there surely is something. And purpose, we all need a purpose in order, you know, for life to to have any meaning, we have to have a purpose. A purpose not just to do something good for ourselves, but also for the world around us. Right. You know? So I uh, believe you can find purpose and there's much you can do even even when you are sick and you're old and you're you're lying there, there's still a, you can there's you're there's still a presence. 
you're st still present, you're still important, you can tell stories, you mm -hmm. know, talk about your experiences. Or if you have little money, well, then cook for somebody or help someone who is in need or talk to someone, you know, right. make, make someone's life a little better. I think yes. that is our purpose. I really believe that. Yes, I, I agree 100%. I think we're all here for a reason. And even, you know, certain things that happen to you in life, I I would say to people, I think it happened for a reason. I think I was meant yeah. for this to happen to me or for that to happen to me. People will look at me like I'm crazy. And I would say, I'm no. glad it happened to me because it made me a better person. Exactly. Ex but that is how it is. It is exactly how it is. But uh, so I think we need to go through life with awareness Yes, and uh, and as I uh, have become more and more successful, and in the end, I, I at this point, I decided uh, for many years I've been studying the wisdom of the great minds and philosophers because they helped me make sense of the world, yes. and I followed their teachings and mm -hmm. I applied it into my life, and it's not good enough just to know, right. you know, it, knowledge is is only good if you apply it. Yes. And I applied their wisdom and it works. And since it works for me, I felt I want to help others that feel suppressed and defeated like I once felt. Right. And this is my mission. This is now my mission. And I wrote my second book, Lessons Learned About Life and Love, Living with Intention and the Wisdom of Great Minds. And uh, there I wrote... Uh, you know, how I apply this wisdom, I write about, I, I actually teach people to find meaning and fulfillment in life. Right. I think it that's so full important. of important teachings, I think. Yes. So this is what I'm going to leave behind. And this is my mission now to uh, make an impact. Yes. Even if you just impact one person, you've already made a dent. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, leaving your legacy, leaving what you've learned and giving it to others to learn is so valuable and, and Ooh, such a great valuable. feeling. And also then when when uh, <clears throat> my, uh, there was a documentary made, uh, um, uh, it is about my first book, my, my life story. Yes. And uh, when that documentary was made, I really started out, I thought, you know, since I've never done this before, well, I just thought I'm going to take the viewer back by the hand, back to my into my life and uh, let them experience what I've experienced. And I show you know what what this whole uh, life was about for the german people i mirrored the yeah. story through my mother how they suffer to keep afloat and how they dealt with all that conflict it is very very tough it yeah. was very very tough and uh, so my documentary i think is full of important teachings it also i hope it uh, it will develop empathy because mm -hmm. i uh, I uh, tell people uh, I'm, I made myself vulnerable, really, by opening up. But you know what? I think vulnerability is important. It's courage. Yes. Uh, it's courage to, to tell the truth. You know, you don't want to cheat people, tell the truth. And perhaps people can learn from this, especially yeah. young people. This should not be repeated. And to trust in the in the integrity of your own mind never follow blindly yes. that is what was done in nazi germany and is done the same in in russia you know the, right uh, i always say the russian people i would do not condemn them i condemn the regime which is so evil right right so we need to not have hatred for all russians now because this is uh, so many atrocities are happening in this war but in any war that is it's just a horrible thing, but it needs to be, uh, young people need to know about our past in order to learn this is not the way to go. Yes. I think understanding the history of, you know, where people came from, why things happened the way it did, gives, would give our younger generation a better understanding and maybe even respect other nationalities and cultures better if they understood the history behind it. Yes, yes, it's it's definitely a, a historical uh, uh, lesson, definitely. Uh, and so uh, 
I, it was a great way to tell my story and uh, uh, I'm excited about it. Yes. Now it hasn't come out yet. So when is it, is it, it to come out? Well, it is presently at the International Film Festival. Uh, you know, it went through there. Okay. And uh, and uh, I think it'll be released soon that people will see it on YouTube, I think, very soon. Oh, excellent. But, uh, and it's not called From Rubble to Champagne. It's called An Unimportant Girl. Oh, really? Because I, I always felt very unimportant. I was looked down upon. I was the, you know, I felt very unimportant and... Uh, all I ever wanted was love and appreciation and find my place in this world. Right. You know, and that is, that is, uh, has the title of an unimportant girl, but I was everything else, but not unimportant, you know, really yeah. when you think about it. Right. But so many people think that, you know, you go through and, you know, I, I would guarantee you there's over 70% of our society thinks the same way, that they're unimportant, that they don't matter, you know, especially 70% of the functional families, you know, you know, uh, uh, exist, you know, over 70%, you know, are dysfunctional. Yeah. So yeah. You know, people, it, how, how common, you know, is that to think that you're unimportant? If you're not put on a pedestal, if you're not, if you're not told how special you are, you know, and you yeah. go through tragedy in life, you're going to think you're unimportant, that you don't matter. What you have to say is not, it doesn't mean anything. Just because these people put a stamp on you that does not define you. Exactly. You have to say to yourself, I am, I have something beautiful to offer the world. You know, right. That is what you should say to yourself. Everyone is important. Everyone is a child of God, of the, of the higher power. Yeah. And so I, uh, I believe that very strongly. So, uh, yeah, you need to, you need to let go of those self-limiting beliefs. That is yes. the first thing you need to do. It's so important. And be grateful for every little thing that comes your way. It right. builds, it builds, it builds, it builds. And only play the right thoughts in your mind. Stay right. away from negativity, from negative thoughts. You, you get the news, you listen to it. It's Most of it is very negative, can be depressing. You know about it. You should be informed. Then release, let go. Right. And let go of disappointments. Don't let them get you down. Yes. You know? Put out your best. I have learned. We will always be disappointed. You know, we, somebody, we most of the time we put out so much, we expect something well. Put out everything, your absolute best. And yes. then let go. If it's it's not in our control anymore, you know, right? As long as you do your best, you've you've done it. And then let go and don't let disappointment get to you at all. Don't don't be just entertain positive thoughts, good thoughts, the right thoughts, right? And you become just that. You know, those are not empty. You are what you think are not empty words, right? That is really true. And when you are like that, and I've noticed it with me, there's no. I always I learned that from my favorite uh, psychologist and author, Dr. Wayne Dyer. He said, your mind is your kingdom. Mm -hmm. No one can enter it without your permission. <laughs> Don't let others make a pig, pig pan out of your mind. Yes. You allow only to enter into your mind what, what is clean, what is beautiful, what you want. Because right. your thoughts are part of your body. You know? Yes. So you become what you think. And I look at myself and I said, I like myself. I'm very content with myself. Uh, this is the person I wanted to be. Yes. And everybody can do that. It's their choice. We have a choice. There's a negativity. There's a positivity. There's yes. that energy. Which side do you want to be on? It's your choice. Right. And I choose to be only on the positive side. I keep my face toward the sun Excellent. all the time. I love that. I love that. I think if more people felt like that, the world would be such a better place and people would be in such a better standing with themselves. They would feel so much better about themselves. You just said it. People would be so much happier because I go actually when people, and this is, this is really, I'm, I'm telling you this from my heart. Uh, wherever I go, when people ask you, how was your day today? I, I, I said, my day is good. Every day is good. Mm. I'm just grateful to be here 
Life is beautiful. Every day is good. And they said, really? You know, most of the time, it's just a figure of speech. Right. You don't even uh, <laughs> want to wait for your answer, the cashier or whoever. But I, I, uh, I am there for that person. When I'm with you, I'm present only for you right now. I focus right. on you. And I think we need to be that way. Whatever we do, pay attention for the moment, for what you do right now. Pay attention to every action, every art object everything pay attention attention right. attention is so important not oh, yes. just be so flighty and and uh, go go a little deeper and and have a purpose like i said yeah. uh, consider yourself part of that's what i do i yeah. consider myself part of every human being of 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 every human being because i truly believe everything is really one yes because we're so yeah. deeply interconnected with one another. We just forget in this hectic, impoverished world. Because look, we have all the instruments yes. uh, to, to do all kinds of things. People can, mm -hmm. you know, the human beings can, can do so much. And yet we are impoverished within. We, we can deal with everything, but we cannot deal with ourselves. There's yes. time to do something about that. And my teachings... Uh, are uh, not at theories, yes. they are experiences. And let me tell you, exp life experiences are much more convincing than than the theories. I agree 100% with that so much. Because when you go through it and you actually succeed, you learn so much during the process. And your experiences, when you speak to others, so many people, even if it's a different subject, they could relate to you, either the emotion, Absolutely. The situation, whatever the case may be. And that bond is there. And then when you explain how you overcame it, you give people ideas on how they can apply that to their own lives and overcome it themselves in their lives. Yes. And it's all genuine. Uh, it is all really genuine because you've lived it. Yes. Uh, that's, it's, it's very, very important. Uh, to connect and really my life experiences look much like other people's right you know, just just like you said and that's why you need to relate you can relate yes. I think and that is why I come back to it again and again uh, vulnerability open yourself up you build bridges right you connect yes. with others I think yes. that's what that's lacking right now but we can there's there, there is there is a time to do this yes because i think everyone every single one, human being wants to be happy wants yes. to be fulfilled yes wants to self-actualize themselves oh, you know 100%. every human being wants to do that there is a way to start this and yes my my book will lead people and it's full of important teachings to work hard to better themselves and to make the most the best of even in adverse situations I think that's you know, wonderful. Find yeah. the good. Find the good in the in the challenges. I yes. think that is mainly what I mean. Yeah. And I, I think that's a wonderful way of answering it because instead of looking at it as a tragic moment and feeling sorry, I call it the pity party. Learn, take take what you learn from it and use the positive things that came out of it and put, you know, add that to your life. And then make it yourself, like we were saying, stronger to get yourself to a new level. And then what can you do to help others? Because I feel the sense of helping others gives a person such as a feeling of, of achievement and self-worth. You said it. You said it because, you you know, you, you give a gift of helping someone. You cannot keep that gift from yourself. Yes. It goes both ways. It's, it's yes. just the way it is. So I think that's that. Yeah, that is really, really important. And I, you're right. Do not be the victim. You can let the the painful past destroy you, mm -hmm. or you can use it as a powerful tool to help others, to lift right. others up. You know. So that's what I actually do. It's right. how you do things, uh, how you see things. Nothing yes. really changes. It's yes. How you see things. Exactly. Exactly. Now, you said you have a second book also. Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, that was the one which, which I mentioned, Lessons Learned About Life. Okay. Love. 
living with intention and the wisdom of great minds, how I apply their wisdom. And uh, it's uh, full of uh, really important teachings with, uh, for people. So the first one, the memoir is called From Rubbles to Champagne. And the right. second book, the title is called, repeat that. Lessons, lessons learned about life and love. Okay. So the second one is philosophical mm -hmm. and my life experiences, how you apply it. Uh, find, find gratitude in the smallest of things. It's so yeah. important. Gratitude oh, most definitely. So, 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 so you don't, people don't even read this a word. Oh, I'm thankful I got a nice present. I'm thankful I've got a roof over my head. That's yes. already a lot when people can be thankful for these things, which, which are big deal, which are a big deal. You can be thankful for nature. Look yes. at a flower. Yes. Uh, or, or put seeds. I, I find a great uh, satisfaction in gardening. I'm an avid gardener. And you know, you put these tiny hard seeds into the ground and yes. you observe life change in front of you. Yes. You know, you actually see life unfold in front of you. To me, that is a miracle. And for me, actually, everything is a miracle. Yes. And so in, in nature, nature is beauty in its most rawest form. Right. And so in nature, I think we can all find, uh, uh, we should take these these walks or, or go into your garden without devices, no cell phone. Yes. Just look at the birds, look at the, look at the sky, yes. look at the trees, you know, yes. we are all part of that. It's very, very healing. It is has very, a very yeah. healing effect. So if people think, oh, I need money to change things, you don't. No. You start from all. within. Yes. The money is, is a comfort. It wields power. Uh, it wields power in a sense that you can help others. Right. Hopefully people will do that with it. And uh, and But the real wealth is living a life from within with yes gratitude and dignity and fulfillment and happiness yeah. what a joy i wish that for every human being and it oh, can yeah. be achieved you can get there if you pay attention say you ask yourself i want this if i really want this this is how i started i yes. want this i want to feel more than just having a uh, material things around me and there's nothing wrong with it i have a great sense of beauty i love beautiful home I love everything beautiful in material yeah. things. It's not evil, but they're transient. Exactly. Whereas what comes from within, you can lose everything. You will be rich from within. Yes, 100%. I even created a journal and it's called the Gratitude and Positivity Journal. Just so oh. people can write it down. Because sometimes I feel like people don't realize until they stop and give themselves time, maybe in a quiet room or go outside, like you said, sit down on yeah. the glass and then think about what they're actually have gratitude for, what makes them happy, what makes them feel positive. And then, you know, and as you're answering the questions, you come to realizations and you realize you have so much in life to be gratitude, you know, have gratitude for, because sometimes we, unless we stop and think about all the little things that we have, you know, that means so much. And and I always say to people, you, the littlest things in life are the things that probably mean the most to you until you don't realize it until it's taken away from you. That's when they are, realize. you're right. So well said. The little things are the big things. Yes. Really, they are. They are. My ritual, my coffee ritual in the afternoon, this is my time out. Yes. My nice cup of coffee. I don't just drink the coffee and walk with it, you know. From the, yes. I sit down for my coffee. Now is my coffee time. Then I think, right. and I always think good thoughts. And even there, I do some reading, uh, you know, spiritual yes. reading. Mm -hmm. And I build myself up and I get stronger. Right. And I walk around with a smile on my face. I yes. really do. Because I'm content. You're content. And like I said, like, boy, if anyone wants that, and I know everybody wants it, but uh, you have to look for what really matters in life. Yes. A hundred. I realize it can be hard, you know, when you don't, when you have to, uh, uh, your job and you're struggling and you have a family to support. Yes, it's, it's stress. Of course, that can be very, very stressful. It is stressful. Uh, but still always 
know what's important. You yes. know, get your priorities in order. And there's always a lunch hour. There's always a break where you can get back to yourself. And it's like a ceasefire. Yes. You know, almost like a ceasefire. You get back to yourself and you, you get stronger. And, and, and if you do this on a daily basis, take a few minutes, take 20 minutes yes. for yourself. Uh, that will make you stronger, build you up, and it oh. gets, it grows, it yes. grows. It, it's all this development does not just happen. Reading one book, even my book here, uh, reading the 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 uh, advice I give. Uh, you have to apply it, it, it to your life. You have to apply it, but it takes time. It takes you know, time. Really Baby always steps. Say, yeah, I always say it's like you're sitting there. It's like a raindrop falling and seeping deep into the ground and for me everything is absorbed very slowly that's why yes. I did not do well in school because I had a different map that was another thing where I felt worthless right because I had a different map now they have special schools because for children that have a different map that need a different approach well, yes when I grew up it was harsh it's either you got it or you were out and yes. labeled dumb yes. or labeled dumb and you know what that does to a, a oh 100 percent so I have from the get go. I didn't know that as a child, but I have a different map. I need to absorb it very everything, dissect it slowly. For people that get it faster, it's probably easier. But for me, everything is very slow. But when it is in, it's it in. is really deeply in there, and it's applied. So yes. it's actually a good way. In the end, I came out ahead. Right, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think that's wonderful. And you now you said that you know, where can people find your books first of all if they wanted to You can Yeah, they at Amazon at Amazon they can get the book uh, at, at local bookstore you can try to order it but Amazon is the easiest. Yes. Okay. It's very easy. They always have it in stock. They have the books in stock so uh, yeah. They can get it at Amazon and I also have the website uh, vivianknabel.com. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook, I'm everywhere. <laughs> even though even though I'm not really technically much, you know, much for the technology, but uh, 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 I'm definitely out there. <laughs> now for, for YouTube, you said there's going to be more information and more trailers about the documentary. What do you, do your, is your, your YouTube um name so people will know where to look I, I think i think they're going to tell me that i don't i don't really know. okay so Every probably best interview, type your name probably i would think probably yeah or go to my website you know and it's out yes. i'm sure that's all going to be on there on the website knabel.com yes. my website everything all that i've done is on the website i also have a podcast and um, it's called uh, like my second book, Lessons Learned About Life and Love. And we have interesting guests. You know, we have people, uh, psychiatrists, we have uh, psychologists, we have interesting authors. Yes. And we discuss human emotions. I love and it. I think it is meant to bring people together, to bring our, put our minds together, you know, bring us together in a way. In, with our minds yes you know, definitely um so i uh i uh there people can listen also and learn a lot about anxiety you know we go through all kinds of emotions and right it's, it's very instruct it's very very uh, instructive i think oh excellent and your podcast name again it's lessons learned about life and love i That's love it just like the, the title podcast. Yeah, just like the title of the second book, and like I said, very interesting guests, discussions about our emotions, and uh, it's a way to bring us together. You know, yes. So that that is all. That is what I'm here for. This is and my they, mission here. They can find your link to your podcast on your website, probably also on the website. It's all there. All the podcasts I've done. It's all on the website. Now, before we go, if you had to give the, the guests, the listeners, a couple of tips just to keep in their mind about how they can become a better person or how they can renew themselves, things that you feel are valuable. Is there a couple of things you'd like to say to them before we go? Yeah, I think uh, uh, pay attention always that we're all deeply interconnected with one another. Treat other people with grace. 
mm-hmm. and uh, and uh, definitely uh, set achievable goals. Yes. And I do that and I pursue them relentlessly. Put out your best and then detach. Yes. Also detach. One other thing I want to say that's very important, which I've learned, uh, the negativity that we we do encounter it. You know, yes. this is life. You know, we're going to the... And if, if uh, something is negative, uh, we have to deal with unpleasant things, uh, deal with them, but then detach. Don't allow yourself to get, get angry. Just gently detach. I like that. That's yes. so important. Absorb. It's there. Think it all through. And then... Gently detach. Don't let it go inside and and uh, build hatred. And I I don't know this. I for me, love is the greatest power. Yes. And and I I think I consider myself almost a vessel of love. Really, the love has many facets. There's yeah. the you know the, there's the physical love which is beautiful, but then there's the facet of love of nurturing. Yes. And a sense of responsibility, you know, have yes. that sense of responsibility and, uh, and uh, treat other people well, treat them yes. with grace. Yes. Oh, I love it. I love it. That's, that's so true. We, we need that self-love and we need to learn how to love others and respect others as well. That's so true. It, it is very, once you are, it's, it's like, like an unconditional love, loving without an object. Yes. You know? Just, uh, uh, just uh, being a loving human being. I think yes. that is very important. And uh, you just don't, uh, you don't need anything. You just, uh, you just. It's just something that that uh, that uh, comes. Uh, it flows and it it dissolves all limitations. It really does. It's true. That is so true. Oh my goodness. It's been such a pleasure having you on this show. I, Thank you so much I, for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You provided us with such valuable and wonderful information. I think I think a lot of people are going to get a lot out of what you said. If if they haven't already, it will soak within them and, and it will go into their heart and their soul. And it will definitely, I think, be an icebreaker to wake them up. You know, I, I think- I hope so. I hope so. And also, I think, again, um, you have many uh, people, you know, there are many inspirational books that's all out there. It's great. Yes. But I think when a person has gone through the experiences oh, and has learned and grown that. through it and talks from there, from the heart with yes. openness, I think it often connects. You know, yes. it often connects. And then it can fall on... Uh, uh, fertile soil, which I hope it will, because my only uh, uh, goal is to like to give back now, because yes. I'm going to be eighty and uh, I'm full of life. I have still um, goals to better the world a little bit, but like I said, everything we do, every action we take, makes a dent in the universe. It does. Uh, it really does. So I believe in that. It's it's so true. And thank you so much, Vivian, for being on the show. I had a wonderful thank time. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. And uh, it's great to have a voice. <laughs> I thank, thank you. And, and me, I'd love to have you come back on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. <laughs>